Welcome to the presentation of Safe Rehearsal Space, a hospitable classroom environment. This presentation is co-authored by me, Dr. Kelly Aliano and Dongshin Chang. I teach at Long Island University's Post Campus in New York and Dongshin at Hunter College, City University of New York. As instructors of academic theater courses, we have developed a research interest in examining teaching pedagogy of critical thinking and writing. We have so far presented papers and coordinated and moderated panels at various professional theater and writing conferences. We've also published a book chapter on scaffolded approaches to writing a research paper and a journal article on low stakes writing activities. In this presentation, we will focus on the importance of building the classroom as a safe rehearsal space, a hospitable environment, which we find empowers our students and cultivates agency in them. Our presentation is divided into two parts. In the first part, I will describe some of the concepts and theoretical frameworks that inspire our work. In the second part, I will describe and reflect on some of my actual teaching practices and classroom experiences. In terms of building the classroom as a safe rehearsal space, a hospitable environment, we are inspired by the work of Mary Snyder Broussard, Jackie Tuck, David Nicole, and Paolo Freire. In her review of the literature on low stakes writing and creativity, Mary Snyder Broussard notes its emphasis on a need for student writers to have a safe psychological space to experiment without fear of consequences or criticism. Such safe spaces encourage learners, both novice and expert, to take risks, practice divergent thinking, experiment, and learn through failure. Broussard further draws the parallel of such safe spaces in low stakes writing for writers to laboratories for scientists and rehearsals or practices for actors, musicians, and athletes. As we teach critical thinking and writing in the field of theater, we find Broussard's analogies especially inspiring. We need, to find, we need to create a safe space for our student writers to experiment without fear of consequences or criticism. The analogy Broussard draws between rehearsal or practice for actors and low stakes writing for writers makes absolute sense. In her research on academics who teach writing in higher education, Jackie Tuck advocates for teachers to create a hospitable space in which they engage in dialogues with their students, build trust with them, and care for them. Such a space brings intellectual nurturance and satisfaction for both student and teacher. The dialogic approach recalls David Nicole's discussion on effective written feedback that must be embedded in dialogic contexts in which feedback activities are shared across teachers and students and are adaptive, contingent on student needs, discursive, meaning rich in two-way communicative exchanges, interactive, which means linked to actions related to a task or goal, and reflective, including on the goal action feedback cycle. Nicole also highlights the benefits of peer feedback. It can, for example, heighten students' reflection, deepen their engagement with feedback from wider and multiple perspectives, and enhance opportunities for rich and extended dialogues. In our experience as teachers, we have found that it is essential to be attentive and responsive receivers of student ideas, playing the role of active audience. This vision creates a dialogic classroom environment, allowing for discussion between everyone present. To ensure this atmosphere of conversation, we have experimented with the logistics of our classroom spaces. We have found that focus is best maintained when students and the instructor sit together in a circle, as opposed to the instructor standing and talking to the students. This allows each voice to be equally valued during discussion. We also contemplate the importance of classroom comfort, considering the effect of temperature, lighting, and other factors on the student experience. In such a built learning environment, rather than teaching our students what to think, we guide them as to how critical thinking happens and to inspire them to think for themselves. My experiences as an instructor at LIU Post are quite unique. At many universities, students on, often only have a single instructor once or perhaps twice for academic coursework. 
as I am usually one of the only um, or perhaps one of two instructors teaching the academic theater history courses in a given academic year, nearly all of the undergraduate students in the theater program will take at least one of my academic classes. And if I teach introduction to drama, it is possible that a student can have me for four of their academic courses. There are numerous recent, recent graduates for whom this was true. Because of this, the students are able to become very close with one another and with me, as we all work together frequently. This can create a great environment for discussion and learning from one another. There are many positives to this sort of teacher-student relationship. First, a close relationship with students leads to a more productive and dialogic learning environment. Because I get to be a frequent part of my students' educational journeys, I think of the teacher-student relationship as a personal connection, and that sort of bond is important to my teaching process. If students are comfortable in my classroom, they will become more likely to participate. I like to think of my classrooms as spaces for original thought and for open dialogue about key topics and issues related to the course content. The dialogic learning environment is built upon my care and concern for my students. It is important to me to be present for the needs of my students. The construction of the hospitable classroom environment begins with the instructor and it is essential to create a persona that is warm and open. While we aren't meant to be friends with our students, it is still vital to offer them an inviting classroom experience where they feel as though we are talking, if not as equals, at least as individuals sharing an experience. As Paolo Freire notes in Pedagogy of the Oppressed, dialogue cannot exist, however, in the absence of a profound love for the world and for people. The naming of the world, which is an act of creation and recreation, is not possible if it is not infused with love. Love is at the same time the foundation of dialogue and dialogue itself. We must show active care and concern for our students in order to create an atmosphere of true dialogue with them. This dedication to my students can lead them to a deeper commitment to the coursework. They care about me and my course and want to do the most they can to continue to enrich that experience. The more care and concern I offer then can be felt reciproc reciprocally as it leads to more dedicated coursework from my students. This creates a space that is conducive to dialogue between instructors and students and amongst the students themselves. We can speak openly about course topics and students know that whatever they say will be respected and I as instructor can expect the same level of respect in return. In order to construct my classroom as a dialogic space in which students receive active feedback on their development throughout the entire semester, all of my coursework is scaffolded. The low stakes writings are all designed to serve the larger course objectives, both in terms of content and skills development, and we begin working on our final graded project by the halfway point of the term. They complete this assignment in a series of activities, each of which receives formative comments as it is submitted to ensure that the project is deepening over the course of the second half of the term. The earlier assignments are lower stakes than the final paper itself, making it safer for students to make mistakes in these preliminary activities. If they engage the guidance and feedback that they are receiving from me, they can improve their work moving toward the final draft. In addition, to create a relevant class experience, I try to connect the classwork to the students' daily lives in some way, as this will both make the course feel important to them while also giving me, as the instructor, the opportunity to get to know my students more personally. My goal here is to make the course relatable, but also to validate the students' thoughts and experiences. I want to build a level of trust between my students and myself, and that ultimately will allow them to learn better. This model only works, however, when the classroom is constructed as a safe space for sharing and discussing ideas, and when there is trust between instructor and students. In my introduction to drama course in the spring of 2019, for example, I designed a whole six week unit around the performance of self on Instagram so that we could use our coursework to unpack the lives my first year students were actually living. I allowed them to use this digital space as a safe one and only have me as a follower if they preferred so that they could air grievances about the college experience. It was a very personal, but also very meaningful way to teach my students about what it means to perform in everyday life. A project like this only worked because the students trusted me, but through that built trust, 
they were able to gain a deeper understanding about performance in everyday life, as well as a new lens through which to explore their own social media performances. In this way, I tried to create a dialogic approach to classroom learning. Rather than the instructor telling the students about what they should learn, I am open to hearing their ideas and taking the course in the new directions that are of interest to them. After we read the syllabus of any course that I teach, I open the floor for students' suggestions of what else we can or should cover that term. And I remain flexible throughout the coursework. For example, last fall, during a unit on religious performance, one section of classical theater history became fascinated by the performance of cults. So we spent a day on student discoveries about that subject, even though my other two sections pursued a different topic. In general, I prefer to engage students in critical thinking and discussion, and I allow us to meander from my strict lesson plans in the pursuit of getting them to ask incisive questions and to make key revelations for themselves about course topics and their applications to our contemporary world. In being open to student ideas and to student-generated course content, I hope to be creating a hospitable learning space, both literally and figuratively. I want my classroom to be both a physical place that is comfortable for student learning and discussion, exemplified in having students sit in a circle with me so we can talk to one another. Being able to make eye contact with me and with one another makes the discussion more of a multi-person dialogue. It also makes it more difficult for students to hide in the back of the classroom and thus miss out on the conversation. It is important that students feel comfortable and I regularly ask them about classroom temperature, lighting, AV volume, and other practical concerns to ensure classroom comfort. This allows the classroom to become a hospitable space in which the students feel safe and that their needs are being met. This physical arrangement is built to reinforce the classroom as a metaphorical safe space that feels conducive to students being able to express themselves freely. In exchange, I hope to mitigate the anxiety I might feel as their instructor. Knowing that for me too, this is a safe environment to explore ideas with my students without fear of judgment on my teaching or course content. If we work together, we can make the best class experience possible for everyone present. Thank you.